I'm Jason Sumray. I'm a painter. Uh, I, like, I like the word painter rather than artist. I like feeling the tradition of painting. I have to say it wasn't... I wanted to become a jazz musician when I was younger. Why I chose art as a, a way of life is a complicated question. It's a simple question, a complicated answer, I'd say. In the end, uh, it's a need to do something. It's all wrapped up in your identity. The need to say something. Uh, the belief when you're doing art, you believe you're saying something important. Even if people aren't seeing it, you think it's uh, something worth saying. And the first thing, of course, is that I'm not going to. I've got a, a little idea about the etchings, but apart from that, uh, no idea at all until we get everything out and see what works. At the moment I feel pleasantly surprised, <laughs> actually I'm really pleased to see how they're looking, because bear in mind I haven't seen these out in my studio, really, it's, it's a small space, and the worry was how they're going to cope in a larger space. I, I was worried that they'd look tiny, but the feeling I've got at the moment they seem to exist in their own space. Um, and it's also a good way when you start putting things out. Sometimes it's very hard to judge it when you're working on them, certainly, or, or in your studio, whether things work totally. And once you put them out in a setting like this, you can start to get a distance from them and see them in a different light. It's interesting to uh, start with this one, uh, this print, which uh, I've had on my wall on and off for uh, so many years. This, this was brought back as a present for me from my parents who uh, went to the exhibition in uh, Paris, 1974. I didn't realise how much this has probably influenced me over the years until uh, I put up some of my more recent paintings up on the wall and then could see the connection there. This one here, which uh, I think that, that jug at the uh, very top of the table there uh, echoes the, the, the George Brock there, so, so unconsciously I think I must have uh, brought that in. And, and also the, the second jug where I start painting within a painting, but it, the, the connection between the two and the kind of conversation that's going on there. I don't set up still lifes to paint. You get caught up in what you're seeing in front of you in the space of what you're seeing. Of course, you know, if you're doing imaginary still lifes, you're much more free to push it around. So. Uh, I think it's quite interesting that some of this jug has quite a different character to it and it feels like it's rearing back. Amongst all the protagonists in my uh, dramas, the jug interests me as well because it, it can be a dominating figure or a subservient figure. It can create movement in one direction or another. It's also in itself a jug is um, Full of symbols and metaphors, we refer to the jug almost like a human being with its, its body, its head, its lips. And although I've left behind people and figures in my in my paintings, I think jug comes closest to replacing them. Yes, so the etching, the only way I etch is dealing with the contrast of light and dark and the way things emerge from darkness. I love dealing with that. And you can see that some of the paintings, I mean, this is that was from a, a painting there, um, another painting that didn't survive, but I did an etching of it. I felt really recently I've, I've learned learning a lot more about just leaving more ink on the plate, not trying to take too much off. So you get this, this uh, feeling of things emerging from the dark. Uh, it's a lovely process. This is interesting, it's got, it's a, my dad is a painter, and this is an old stretcher of his, arms somewhere, horizontal arms, number three, 1968, price £90. Pound. It's very hard to quantify the influence within one's family. I mean, obviously, my, I come from a family of artists, and my dad was a painter and a, a teacher, those influences um, have a big impact and, and over a long time when you're, certainly when you're young, are surrounded by 
art, surrounded by um, my dad's art. In terms of modernism, his, his is more modern than mine. Of course, I couldn't have painted that without all of that going on beforehand, but uh, it's a typical Cubist painting of it. I, I love this jug, we're seeing sort of inside, outside, top, bottom. Um, and I think when one thinks of the question, what's in a jug, and a title, in a way that answers it so much more, doesn't it? I like this idea of these, these dark backgrounds, which really runs, apart from a couple of recent ones, really runs all, all the way through it. And I think it, um, it's very useful. It, it means I don't have to worry about putting it in context. I can just focus on, on the uh, action that's going on on the table like that. It really gives me the opportunity when I'm uh, painting these, these darks that I can, I can actually use colour more expressively. So I can use a red or an orange, I mean a red or an orange or pink against a very dark, a warm black or brown. This is just fantastic. It's really nice actually. With those two together. Yeah. I think this space it's probably one of the nicest spaces I've exhibited in. The, the light's just fantastic. And um, and I feel, I hope I'm right, is, is I feel that this isn't a series in the, sen in the sense that I think it's going to go on. Whereas previously I would work on something and it, it kind of came to an end, which is always extremely difficult. You feel like you, where do you go then? And, and you have a year or so of sort of difficult time trying to find your way. It, it feels like to me like things have come together in my painting life. And, it's come together by coming almost back to doing a still life and it's resolved a lot of issues and in a way that's where my interest started with a lot of work. So although one doesn't want to use the word comfortable when you're talking about painting, I feel more at home painting these kind of pictures and in this kind of tonal range. I don't think I've changed my subject matter that much over the years. In fact, I think it's often quite uh, revealing to look at um, work I've done much, much earlier in my life and uh, see how I'm still tackling the same kind of subjects. But I think my practice has matured, that's for sure. I think I actually enjoy painting more now than I ever have. I often think uh, whatever subject I'm painting, I often think what a wonderful thing I'm doing.